Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Eustace Farmer, and as always, I hope you're doing well today. So this is the GPS 5.01 tutorial. So why am I doing this when there's other YouTubers out there doing uh, tutorial videos, and they're all just great? Well, I want to have one in my channel personally, and I want to help out my subscribers and viewers that come through. Um, because in the comments sections, I've noticed there's a lot of folks that are saying that they are totally new to Farming Simulator altogether. And I'm just thrilled with that. And I would love to be part of helping you get the most out of this game and to enhance your farming experience. So I'm going to teach you about GPS today. Now, I am no pro, to say the least. I don't know every little last nuance of it, but I know enough to get you going and to show you some, maybe some more advanced features. And we will go through every one of the buttons on the panel, and it's not going to take as long as you think, and it may not even be as intimidating as you think. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first demonstration today, I have three for you, um, and one of them may be something that you may not have thought about. So that's going to be pretty cool too. Um, so the first one is going to be um, for the harvesting, and this will apply to silage harvesting, any type of grain harvesting, because the one thing you need to understand first and foremost is that it's calculating working widths of the implements that you're using. Implement in this case being the header of the combine, okay? So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to bring up your GPS. Now I noticed, and this is a little freaky zoid thing with the game, I don't know, but um, it doesn't always come up in your controls menu up on the left, how to activate it. So here's a hot key for you. You're going to hit your left control button. You're going to hold it down, and you're going to hit the zero key on your number pad. Not your number row, but your number pad. So that's left control and zero. And you're going to see that's going to bring up the first little HUD. That's your status HUD. Now I'm going to hit the period button in my number pad while holding the left control. That's going to bring up the button panel. So now if I hold left control and hit period, I can take them away or reduce down to just the status or I can bring up my controls again. And this is quite handy because you may not need the control panel out the entire time that you're harvesting so you can just put it away and just see your status or nothing at all. Okay? So that's the first thing. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll start at the top with save and load category. Now when you hover your mouse over each button it's going to give you a little synopsis of what it does. And you're going to see that down below, above the tractor, and above the header width. It says 10.6. So this one is for loading the course. So obviously if you have saved a course, you can load the course here. And it corresponds with this number. You'll see the number 1. So this is the save slot number 1. Now unfortunately, from what I've been told with Farming Simulator 17, it doesn't allow you to custom name the courses anymore. Um, so it's going to give them to you by number, so you'll have to note down what courses you've saved to what fields or activities. Okay, so that's load course. If we go to the next one, that's going to be save course. So after you get it all saved, uh, tweaked up the way you want it, you click that button and it's going to save in this slot. If I want it to save to a different slot, you're going to push the plus symbol. And you scroll through them upwards or back down with the minus symbol. Very easy. Okay, and it tells you there's previous store slot, there's the next store slot, it tells you. It tells you here, well it doesn't tell you nothing there, because that's obvious. <laughs> now this one here is delete course. Let's say it got all jumbled up and you don't want to save that. Well, make sure you're on the slot that you want and you can delete it. Or let's say you want to replace something in another slot. Bring up that slot and then hit delete and you're set to go. Now the first thing I would always do is... Um, we're going to go over to working with here. You can increase or decrease these manually by using these buttons, okay? So if I go like this, you'll see it's going out. If I hit the minus symbol, it's going to go back in and I can adjust it manually. And you'll see the working with adjusting down here, 11.2 it says now. Let's put it back to 10.6 or 10.7 thereof. <laughs> okay, so here's the best thing to do. Just hit A. That's automatic. And you see it automatically adjusted to the working width of the header. And then you can tweak it. If, if you're missing a little on the side, you can always adjust it 
uh, by increasing or decreasing the working width. Now, another thing you can do is with the core set. Let's say you like the working width the way it is, but you just want to move the course either to the left or the right. Here we go. This button here. You'll see it moves to the left. And I can tweak the entire course over to the right without affecting my working width. Okay. Now, let's say you can't get it back just so again. Just hit new. And boom, it's back. 10.6, just how you had it. Okay, very good. Now, this one below here, this is, you'll see a left and a right angle. So this is going to bring it out and it's going to offset it at an angle to the left. So if you got a crooked crop or an irregular field, that's what you're getting there. And this one will bring it back to the right. Okay. And now doing that, it's going to set the width again, but it's still going to remain at an angle. So you just hit new and it goes right back to where you had it. You can play around with these buttons. You're not going to hurt anything. That's the great thing is play around with it. There we go. Let's see what that does. All right, that's going to reset the offset over here. Okay, so the offset. You're going to see the little line in the middle. This is an offset line. There's a little purple dash. I don't know if you could see it over the crop, but you'll see the green line here and then the little purple dash. This is how much, uh, how many degrees, or how many meters off center. And you can increase and decrease that, okay? And again, if you don't want to go through all that, just hit your reset offset, okay? There we go. And it's going to put it back for you. This tells you the reverse offset. You can, um, when you're doing your turning and stuff, you hit this and it'll do reverse offset. It'll change when you go in another direction. This is automatic reversal of the offset. So that'll do it automatically. Pretty self-explanatory, huh? Now down here is the line mode in your basics section. So you'll see the green line over there. Let me swing around here so you can see it better. And you see it's kind of like a bent line. Now this is above the crop. And that's great when you're doing fully grown crops. <laughs> but let's say you're plowing a field or cultivating. You can have it right at ground level. Now if you're doing YouTube filming and you would, or screenshots and you would rather not have that on there at all, click it again and it goes off. So you just keep clicking it till you get the result that you want. Now don't be trying to play that you're not using GPS by turning it off because it does have um, warning signals when you get near the end and getting ready for turning. So you're going to get caught. <laughs> uh, okay. Now then, let's get it back above the crop. And you'll see it shows you with the little lines here. See, they've got the little bent line now. This is really a brilliant mod. Now the next one, as you see here, course from a neighbor. So if you've got another harvester that's already got a great course plugged into it, your buddy can pull it up right beside you. Hit the shopping cart symbol here, and it's going to copy the course from that harvester over to this one. Very easy. And then you could both work in unison. <laughs> okay, so this button here, this is for the free lanes um, adding or subtracting. And what they're telling you is, like, when I'm using turning mode, I can tell it how many lines I want it to skip. So we're down at nothing now. It's just going to go from one row. It's going to make a tight turn and go up the other one. However, <clears throat> the, the, it can't make the turns that tight without missing bits. So what I like to do, I'll hit plus on the, make it plus one, and you'll see it happens right down here. Here's a picture of the field with the turnings, and it just went up to one. Let me put it back to zero and show you. There's zero plus one. So now it's going to do every other lane. So it's going to go up here. It's going to skip the working width that much. And it's going to do the next one coming down and so on and so forth. And then when you go to come back, you just have it turn to the left. And you continue to leave it on skip a row. And it's going to pick up all the rows that you missed going this way. If that makes sense. If it doesn't, no worries. I'm going to show you. <laughs> okay. So we already know about the new button because that's going to put everything back fresh and clean. Now how about this one here? The auto stopping distance. Let's put it to here. This is going to 
tell it to stop when it gets to the end of the field, and it's going to shut off your cruise control and everything. Um, that way, if you're not paying attention or what have you, you're not going to go driving off down and through the woods and over the rocks. <laughs> but let's say you want to have it stop earlier than the end of the field. Maybe you got half a field to do, right? You're going to see it increase right here. There you go. And now you're going to have to just play with this to find out, um, you know, where is the best stopping point for you. And you put it back to zero. You just hold it, and it'll, it'll speed scroll, see? There we go, R1. Okay, so now that we've come down to the turning portion of the game, <laughs> we've seen stopping, automatic stop. Here's the turn, and it's got the little globe with the arrows on it. Then you have to determine which way you want the harvester to turn. So I want it to turn to the right when it gets to the end because there's nothing on the left to harvest. <laughs> and you won't see it light up. You'll see it change right over here, down here where my mouse is going. Um, now let me switch back and forth. There's left. And there's right. Okay? So now that's all set. So we have our working with determined... And we know our working width is 10.6, so that looks good for a start. So now, how do we get it to go? That's quite easy. So you'll see here that the little satellite dish, that means the application is active, it's orange, it's active and it's waiting to be told what to do. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and you'll see the little Wi-Fi waves come out. That means it's going to do its thing as soon as it goes. So now, you could start driving manually, or you can do um, cruise control. Let's start out manual, just to show you. And I'm not going to touch my steering wheel. I'm not going to steer. There we go. And it's going to follow that line all the way down. But as you know, sometimes, you know, your working width could be spot on perfect, but the field could be a little irregular. It may not be perfectly square, even though it looks perfectly square. So that's, there's the beep. That means my turn is coming up in case I'm falling asleep. So let's see what happens. I just hold, keep my foot on the gas, and he's going to go ahead and make his automatic turning and skip a row and go right back in there. Now you see, it still skipped, you know, a little bit at the end there. It made a little blib there. Um, I'm not perfect with this. That's what I'm saying is, you know, I'm sure the pros out there, they could tweak this up really nice and get it to do it perfectly. Um, I'm what I consider a basic user, but I don't mind touching up little things like that at the end. There's our warning beep again. Now, the warning beep is basically to let you know, like if you're doing manual turning, that, you know, we're getting to the end of the field, wake up. <laughs> there we go so even though it's doing just a little partial row I'm not going to fool with my working with because I wanted to maintain this when we go back and pick up what we've just left so that's it for this now so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now you're going to see when I start to move the steering wheel it's going to deactivate the driving mode. See? It'll just turn orange again. So you got to make sure you turn that back on before you start going on your next course. Okay, so now we're ready to go back. And this time I'm going to use cruise control. And just as a safety in case I hit my foot on the cruise control, I'm going to um, I'm going to set the speed down to, um, to 6. And I'm doing that with the game extension mod. And I do have a mod review on that. So I'm just holding my right click button down. And I'm scrolling with my mouse wheel to change the settings of cruise control. We're going to have it turn to the left now. Now we're going to hit left control W. It's active. Now all I have to do is engage my cruise control and away it goes. So one thing I think I neglected to tell you was if you want to navigate this menu at any time just hold down your left control button and use your mouse. But you have to continue to hold the left control button down to use the mouse. As soon as I let it go, that's it. So pretty simple. So let's see what this old bugger does now. So now what I'm going to do is, because it's missing that little bit, I'll increase the working width a little bit and see if we can 
pick it up at the bottom of the next row. Let's see what it does. Perfect. So, see, it's going to miss little bits, even in the turnings. But as you see, it works quite well, despite the little miss spots, which you can go back and touch up later. So, no big deal. You're still getting quite a time savings, because when you do perfectly straight rows, obviously, the fastest route to a destination is the straightest line. So if you're going crooked, in and out, those little seconds that you're doing that add up towards the end, and they turn into minutes. So the straighter your rows, the faster you'll get done. Okay, so let's go try it with a plow. Now, just to make sure, I'm always going to go ahead and hit my automatic when I come in here. So I'm going to hold down my left control button so I can use my mouse, and I'm going to go under working with, and I'm going to hit A for automatic, and I'm going to see that is the working distance of my plow, so it looks good. So we won't do automatic turning on this one. Let's just do manual gas pedal and see what we got. So now I'm going to activate the course. I can do it with my mouse by clicking here or control W on your keyboard. Now all I got to do is engage my cruise control, which is number three on my number row. And there we go. I'm not touching the gas pedal. I'm just letting him do his thing. And he's doing a fine job. Now, I can also adjust this working with over because it is a little bit in the grass. And you can see that first blade is in the grass. So let's do that. Let's adjust him over there, right along the edge. Perfect. There we go. It means we're coming to the end, so I got to get ready. Tap my gas pedal to stop. Now you'll notice, listen to it click off. You'll see that little satellite dish go white. So let's lift it up. Ba boom. The little Wi Fi symbol came off. It didn't go white. I lied. <laughs> now I'm just going to turn this until I get my, my red lines right where I want. Now let's see if it'll do it from here. And I'm going to go ahead and swing my plow the other way. There we go. Now let me activate it and see what happens. Control W. And now I'm going to hit number three. And let's see if it'll find it. Okay, so basically it was it's based off of the plow sitting one way. So my bad there, but now we learn something together. So you don't have to flip the plow back and forth. And to be honest, I think this wheel is supposed to be riding the furrow anyway. Now I'm going to adjust my course back to the right a little bit because I see it's really just tickling the line and it really could miss something. So let's get it right over there along that furrow. There we go. It's doing a fine job. Okay, up we go. Now we'll do an automatic turn. Let's go ahead and lay in our course here. There we go. So let's see. Even though I'm a little crooked, I want to see if it'll find it, and I'm sure it will. So let me go ahead and I'll let it go, and then I'll put my plow down when it gets on the dirt. So control W to activate. Actually, we're going to have to do a right turn. There we go. Click this button here. Auto turn to the right. And we'll have it skip one row, just to make sure. Okay. Control W. Now just engage my cruise. Let's see what she does. There we go. Going to tweak it back a little bit. There we go. So, 
you know, if you play around with it, um, you know, coming up one way, you already know you're going to have to adjust it coming down the next way. So you could do that before you even get into the field to start, you know, on your next pass. Like I said, I'm not a pro. I don't do it perfectly. But I can sure get the job done. <laughs> okay, so now that we have automatic turnings, I'm not going to touch my gas pedal, even though I heard the warning. There we go. Okay. So I think you can see there that it works quite well. And you'll notice that there is an offset. You see the purple dashes next to the green line? And that's because the plow in the back is set at an angle. It looks like, oh, what, 20 degrees or something? But it is at an angle, so that is considered an offset. So this is compensating for that. All righty, so last but not least, Let's do a little wind rowing. Now, as you see, I've got it crooked over there. So let's see what happens with that. And yes, I did do that intentionally. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control and I'm going to hit zero and get that course up. Okay, so now I'm going to hit new and automatic. 14.7 is my working with. Okay, so now that was pretty easy. There's our big course. We'll activate it, turn it on and lower it down, and hit my number three. I'm not going to do anything with automatic turning. There we go. Now, of course, it's going to follow that straight path, and that curve is within the working width of the uh, path that we're following. So that's not going to be an issue. But if it was outside that, you can either do it on your next pass or you can go ahead and move your working width to the left or to the right. You know, move the entire course over to get a hold of that and then come back. So there we go, folks. I hope this has been a help to you. So I can go over briefly, really fast again, just some of the keys. So control zero turns it on and off. Control, hold your control, left control down and your period going to bring up the different HUDs or make them disappear. Control W is going to activate and deactivate course mode. Okay. You need that little Wi-Fi symbol on there in order for it to do its thing. And then either you're going to push down on your accelerator or your accelerator button, your W button, or you're going to have it set up on your cruise control. Um, and then, of course, if you hear the beep and you're not doing automatic turning, well, when you hear that beep, when it get, that's going to let you know it's getting to the end of the field. Get ready to make your turn when you get there. Um, if you've got automatic turning, you don't need to do anything when you hear the beep. So I hope this has helped some of our new users um, get a little more comfortable with some of the awesome mods that Farming Simulator has to offer. And as always, if you have any questions um, or you need any help, please feel free to let me know. You can PM me or put it down in the comment section, and I'm happy to do whatever I can to help you out. So until we meet again, please take great care of yourself, okay? And bye-bye for now.